Hi there, welcome back to the channel. This is the League of 72's promotion power rankings. I am not James Alcott. I'm Ali Maxwell, filling in for James, who we send all of our love and congratulations to on behalf of the LO72 family. And I'm sure all of you who are watching this, who have enjoyed James's work on the channel, he's taking a little bit of time off after the birth of his son, sending you all of our congrats, James. You're going to be a fabulous father. And hopefully I am an acceptable stand-in in the meantime for our promotion power rankings. 19 teams who we think are best set for a promotion from the EFL this season. Six from the Championship, six in League One and seven in League Two. We've got some new members. We've got some movers and some shakers. And we'll start with the first team to have secured a promotion this season. Congratulations to Fulham Football Club, promoted back to the Premier League at the first time of asking. They beat Preston handily on Tuesday night in front of a delighted Craven Cottage who saw their heroes do the business. Their number one hero, of course, Alexander Mitrovic at the double, taking him to a scarcely believable 40 goals from 40 games this season. The fans went wild in the stands, loving this Marco Silva side, which has dominated the championship this season. Absolutely no question who the best team in the division has been. Now, there's still work to do for Fulham. The title needs to be secured. They've got Bournemouth up next. It won't be an easy game. They should canter to the title but they need to keep the cherries at bay for Mitro could he add to that 40 goal tally and one more for Fulham to watch out for Manchester City's record of 108 league goals is a second tier record that was from the 2001-2002 season Fulham need 11 goals in their last four league games to break that record and write themselves even further into the history books. What a team they've been this season. Congratulations, Fulham fans. One spot below them and one league below them. Wigan Athletic, very much at the top of it. They had a chance to secure promotion as well on Tuesday night, but away at Ipswich Town, not an easy fixture. And they didn't find it easy at Portman Road, but they battled back. A two-all draw, Will Keane at the double. What a star he's been for them this season. And while they may not have secured promotion at Ipswich on Tuesday night, it's surely only a matter of time. Kai Platt tells us more. Full time, Ipswich two, Wigan two. Wow. Um, I have to say it was a game that uh, Ipswich probably dominated in large parts of the game i think we sat off them a lot and let them have a lot of possession let them come come at us constantly giving the ball away a lot sloppy in possession overall a poor performance from wigan and yet we come away with a huge huge point after being one nil up two one down and then to, to equalize late on unfortunate to not get a winner uh, I thought the momentum really swung with us at the end, but a fantastic point on the road. I would have taken a point ahead because Ipswich is ahead of the game because Ipswich is not an easy place to go, and I knew they'd play as well as they did against us. Um, they needed a response after the, the Rotherham defeat. We needed a response after the Cambridge defeat. I thought their response was probably a bit better performance-wise, but we, we got the draw, and that takes us one point more towards our promotion goals. Shame to not seal it tonight, but we could seal it and possibly the league title as well against Plymouth on Saturday. A huge game that I can't wait for. The Latics are tantalisingly close now, aren't they? It's not easy, their next fixture. Plymouth, Argyle are on their way to Wigan, but a victory will secure promotion or any MK Dons dropped points from this point. It will happen. It just hasn't happened quite yet. One more thing to look out for when it comes to Wigan Athletic and League One. It's a fantastic golden boot race. And Will Keane's brace against Ipswich on Tuesday night means he is now level with Cole Stockton. And there's a few who are just a goal or two away as well. So in League One, that's something to keep an eye on. As for now, Wigan not up yet. But it's only a matter of time. Retaining their spot in third on the promotion power rankings and, well, so nearly secured their League One spot. It's Forest Green Rovers, who started Easter weekend with a 4-0 defeat away to relegation scrapping Barrow. But they regained their composure. They beat Oldham Athletic at home 2-0 on Easter Monday. Regan Hendry, or Vegan Hendry, as the club call him, 
putting them ahead. A little bit of fortune, the goalkeeper you'd think would like that one back. But Forest Green will point to recent injuries, will point to recent games they've dominated where they haven't picked up points and say they deserve a little bit of luck. And while they might have stumbled, you have to look over the whole season. There's no doubt they'll deserve this return uh, or this promotion rather to League One. They matched the points total of their nearest challenges, Exeter and Port Vale over Easter weekend. And it's only a matter of time now. They need just one point to secure promotion. They've got four games in which to do it. Forest Green, third in the power rankings and on their way to League One. Now, Bournemouth were an interesting case because this time last week, it felt like they were under quite a lot of pressure, particularly from Nottingham Forest. But we sit here after Easter weekend and you have to say Bournemouth have strengthened their position in second spot. And really, it seems difficult to imagine anyone catching them now. A couple of shaky nil all draws with Sheffield United and Middlesbrough sent them to Coventry, in form Coventry, feeling the pressure. But what a clutch win this was on Easter Monday. Three nil winners. Jamal Lowe with a start up front through the middle with Dom Solanke justifying that selection from Scott Parker and putting them ahead. They've been such a strange case. They started the season like a house on fire. They flew well clear at the top. They made all those eye-catching signings in January. And yet over the last few months, it's been hard to escape the fact that performances haven't really been at an automatic promotion level. The fans have certainly felt that. And they're in an interesting spot now because Bournemouth are in a very strong position and yet you get the feeling the fans aren't fully convinced. Tom Jordan at the back of the net pod picks it up from here. Business end of the season now. And as a Bournemouth fan, we've got to be confident. Seven clear of Forest playing the same amount of games. And Huddersfield have played two more games, but um, we're four points ahead of them regardless of that. So I'd like to think it take a bit of a catastrophe now for us to, to flop it. We've got tough fixtures mind. People will point to that. We've got Fulham up next and we've still got to go and play Forest and go to Blackburn but as a Bournemouth fan I'll tell you we struggled um, we haven't beat Peterborough this season we haven't beat Hull this season but in terms of the teams up there we've gone to Coventry and just won 3-0 we went to Huddersfield and won 3-0 we also beat them 3-0 at home we've played Sheffield United twice and not lost we've played QBR twice and done the double on them so fixtures probably suit us a little bit in a weird way we should be fine it'll be a relief when it's over well, wow, that Bournemouth-Fulham fixture this coming weekend looks seriously tasty. You wonder what sort of shape Fulham will be in after celebrating promotion on Tuesday night. And as Tom says, Bournemouth have been good against those teams around them. Cannot wait for that one. Regardless of their recent performances and results, Cherry's in a strong position. Scott Parker looks like he'll be securing his second promotion to the Premier League. The first with Fulham and now with Bournemouth. We're very confident of that. That's why they are where they are in our promotion power rankings. Well, Exeter City have been setting such high standards, haven't they, over the last few weeks and months to the point where we allowed ourselves to wonder if they might catch Forest Green at the very top of the table. Probably now we can shelve that part of the discussion because Forest Green have got the five point gap. The main thing for Exeter is this four point cushion between themselves and fourth place. Easter weekend was, well, hit and miss. They beat Colchester comfortably on Easter Friday, but they fell away at Tranmere on Easter Monday. There's no shame in losing away at Prenton Park. Tramier's home record, the best in League Two. For Exeter City now, it's pretty straightforward and you have to be confident because look at the fixtures that they have coming next. Rochdale at home, Rochdale survival secured, almost nothing to play for and a fairly poor League Two side. And then Barrow at home, who might have some motivation in terms of avoiding relegation. But again, Exeter will be so confident of imposing their quality over Barrow in that game. You'd think two home wins would be enough to make sure that Exeter City will be in League One next season, and we certainly think they will be. Nottingham Forest up next. They climb ever higher in our promotion power rankings. That's despite losing to Luton Town on Good Friday, 1-0 at Kenilworth Road. The game decided by a controversial penalty, certainly controversial. If you're a Forest fan, how would they bounce back from that? magnificently well a 4-0 home win against West Bromwich Albion in front of an adoring city ground crowd who witnessed possibly the goal of the season what do you guys think let me know in the comments below debate has swirled around whether Jack Colback actually meant this or not 
you have to say it's a little bit reminiscent of Papa Cisse's goal for Newcastle against Chelsea all those years ago. And Colback was a Newcastle player at one point. I dare say he'll be well versed in that particular strike, regardless of whether he meant it or not. It's one of the goals of the weekend, certainly one of the goals of the season as well. Now, you might wonder why we've got Forest above Luton and Huddersfield, despite those two teams being above them in the table well firstly Forrest have got two games in hand and if they continue their recent form there's every chance that they'll finish in that third place spot regardless for us these rankings are about who we think is most likely to win promotion and if nottingham forest reach the playoffs which they will let's be clear they'll be favorites to win them whether or not luton or huddersfield finish above them such has been their form under steve cooper the strength of them both collectively and with individuals like Brennan Johnson, Jed Spence, Ryan Yates, the whole team is playing so well at the moment. Despite that defeat to Luton, well, they bounced back perfectly, didn't they? And it's very hard to pick holes in this Forest side. That's why they are in this spot. Oh, Rotherham, 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 Rotherham. What is going on at Rotherham? There's been a lot of talk about them bottling first the League One title, which looks like it will be Wiggins then possibly automatic promotion altogether. Now on Saturday, they had the perfect day, picking up a win against Ipswich, silencing the haters, and also seeing both Wigan and MK Dons lose their games. And you just felt, seize the moment, seize the opportunity. And then on Tuesday night, Rotherham went to Burton and they huffed and they puffed and they snatched at chances. And they saw the Burton goalkeeper pull off a string of saves. And they also conceded two incredibly soft goals from set pieces and it's just a sense of a massive missed opportunity for Rotherham and their fans who cannot believe what their team looks like compared to what they looked like what six seven eight weeks ago they looked like they were coasting to league one promotion now there's plenty of work still to do their automatic promotion spot is still massively up for grabs the good thing for Rotherham the big bonus from Easter weekend is that their nearest challengers, MK Dons, lost both of their games as well, had a nightmare Easter, and that's what will be giving Rotherham hope heading into games against Oxford and then to Sunderland as well. It is going right down to the wire in terms of League One's automatic promotion race. Rotherham clinging on for now. Now in League Two, Port Vale, what a strong run they'd been on. It was eight wins in nine before Bristol Rovers came to town on Easter Monday. And unfortunately, but Bristol Rovers' form has been equally good and Vale couldn't handle it. Losing that game 3-1, it's just slowed them down somewhat. They're still in a strong position. They've still got a two-point cushion between themselves, Northampton and Bristol Rovers, who look like their closest challengers, don't they? But that defeat to Bristol Rovers, just sowing a seed of doubt, you maybe think, in Port Vale's mind. Regardless, they're such a strong defensive team, you'd, you'd expect them to bounce back. They've got Decent fixtures coming up, Walsall away, Newport at home, and then what could be a monstrous game on final day away at Exeter. There's a chance that Exeter and Port Vale might be patting each other on the back and celebrating a joint automatic promotion, but there's also every chance that one or both of them could still have everything to play for. League Two's amazing right now, Port Vale at the heart of it in third place at the moment, one to watch certainly over the next few weeks. <sighs> MK Dons are up next and they are down three places in the rankings. It could not have gone any worse for them, I'm afraid. Losing to Sheffield Wednesday at home and then losing to Oxford United away from home as well. Does Oxford United's goal just show the sort of pressure that they're under? MK so good at playing out from the back normally, but maybe that's a touch of nerves. Giving the ball away, smashed home, zero points from their two games over the weekend. Now, it's not all she wrote when it comes to automatic promotion. We know that Rotherham are stuttering as well. The Millers are above MK here just because of that pesky game in hand. Pesky from MK Dons' point of view. Uh, anyway, there's still everything to play for. They are still massively in the hunt. But you have to say it's not been a good week since we last did these rankings for Milton Keynes Dons. You have to say the complete opposite about Huddersfield, who are, unlike MK Dons, up three places in the power rankings. What a few games they have had. Beating Luton, playoff contenders, then drawing with QPR 2 all perfectly good result, and then the perfect away performance in beating Middlesbrough. It was Huddersfield all over, defending their box, 
brilliantly scoring from a set piece goal those sorber thomas deliveries are as good as you get at this level and they have scored more set piece goals than anyone in the championship but they didn't stop there scoring a goal on the counter attack and making sure that they saw out those three points what a strong position they are in at the moment the huddersfield fans are in dreamland as joseph crowther proves next a really impressive set of results from the past week for the town Taking seven points from Luton, QPR and Borough almost cements a playoff spot for Huddersfield. The result against Borough was far more comfortable than I expected it to be, with Town looking dangerous whenever we counter-attacked. Losing Pearson, Ward and Colwell to injuries was a massive blow, but Naby Sarr, and in particular Jordan Rhodes, who is really rolling back the years to 2012, the both stepping up to the plate. We're fully deserving of our place in the table and we're in for yet another exciting end to the season. Town to win the playoffs and penalties again. Wow, Bristol Rovers are setting some serious levels in League Two at the moment, aren't they? They will be terrifying that top three. Seven points in three tricky games against Tranmere, Salford, and then the crowning moment against Port Vale, heading to Vale Park, winning 3 1. And it's all about Elliot Anderson again, I'm afraid. He scored against Salford, he scored against Port Vale, right foot, left foot. It doesn't matter for this kid on loan from Newcastle United, who's absolutely tearing it up at the moment. They had to soak up some pressure and then they killed the game on the counter-attack. Ryan Loft's first goal for the club. Just look at these fans. I'll always maintain that Bristol Rovers fans have the best limbs, home or away, of any team in the 72. And I'd love to know in the comments if you think that's right or wrong. But I will stand by it. And I've watched more EFL highlights than anyone, surely, over the last five years. Bristol Rovers fans, the best limbs. They're also among the most confident fans in the EFL at the moment. And the fact that they're playing Forest Green won't scare them one bit. They've got their eyes on the automatic promotion places. And once they've played Forest Green, you have to say those last two fixtures look incredibly favourable as well. Very hard to think anything other then Bristol Rovers will be picking up minimum six points, possibly seven, possibly nine. The pressure is on that top three, that's for sure. Bristol Rovers in incredible nick at the moment. And probably their equivalent in League One would be Sheffield Wednesday, who are the highest risers in this week's rankings. Four places higher than they were last week. And that's what happens when you win both games over Easter weekend. The first one... Well, what a performance. What a first half performance against MK Dons. Two goals from clever set piece routines. And then, what, possibly the goal of the season in League One from possibly the best player in League One, Barry Bannon. I thought he was trying to hit the moon at first and it's just dipped and dipped and dipped. Perfect from Bannon. What an unbelievable player. They got past Crew on Tuesday night. Only 1-0. Missed a ton of chances. Got the job done. Sheffield Wednesday and their fans, including Connor the Thorpedo Thorpe, feeling very confident right now. Wednesday have got the best form over the last 15 and last five games in League One. So I think that means that you have to be really confident that if we get into the playoffs, that we'd have a very good chance of winning them. Plus, we've got a good record against teams around us. That gives you a lot of confidence. And now we're only four points off the automatics. I think some Wednesday fans are dreaming of that. Obviously, it needs Rotherham and MK Dons to keep up slipping up. And hopefully we can take advantage by winning our next three games. If we do that, then we give ourselves a chance. Well, Connor, let's focus on the next game, because let me tell you a bit about League One this weekend. You've got six of the top eight playing against each other and in Sheffield Wednesday's world it's a fixture against Wickham which could mean everything to them realistically if Wednesday win this game and other results go their way they could be knocking on the door of the automatic promotion places with just two weekends left equally if they lose there's every chance that by the next video they'll be out of the playoffs altogether so it's on a knife edge at the moment but as connor's shown there why would they not be super confident right now the big risers in this week's power rankings sheffield wednesday down two places plymouth argyle you have to feel for argyle because the way the fixture list has fallen has not been kind whatsoever to them they're in such a strong position weren't they just a couple of weeks ago it looked like their playoff spot was secured if you just looked at the league table 
but you'd be wrong not to look at the fixtures as well. A defeat to Wickham on Good Friday, a nil-all draw with Sunderland, which was a good result and they, uh, a game in which they played perfectly well. The keeper, Cooper, making some great saves, as he always seems to. There's just a sense that Argyle are being hunted, hunted by some of the teams beneath them. They're the ones with something to protect, and it's not like it gets any easier for them either. They have to play against Wigan, with Wigan knowing that a win secures automatic promotion. You can't come up against a better, more motivated side in League One right now. And then MK Dons on final day as well. MK will surely have something to play for as well in terms of their automatic scrap with Rotherham United. So I feel a little bad for Argyle because of the way the fixture list, uh, the cards that they've been dealt on that front. It doesn't mean they're playing desperately poorly, but they're certainly there to be shot at in League One. And they're going to have to grit their teeth and tough it out if they're going to secure their playoff spot. Now, last time we spoke about Northampton Town, we're pretty concerned, weren't they? James rightly pointing out their poor form in comparison to some of the teams gunning for promotion in League Two. But they put all of that behind them. A perfect Easter weekend for Cobblers. Five goals scored across the two games, zero conceded, and goals from attacking players as well. They've been so good from set plays all season, haven't they? Horsfall and Guthrie racking up the goals from centre-back. But here's Hoskins scoring. The assist from a Apere a is probably the story of the weekend in terms of Northampton. A young strikers taking a while to get going since joining in Jan, but he had two goals and two assists over the course of that weekend. And it just means cobblers can breathe a little bit easier. In fact, if they're being really ambitious, why wouldn't they look at that top three? If they can continue their recent form, keeping clean sheets, providing a threat from set pieces and from open play more so than earlier in the season, there's no reason why they couldn't challenge for the top three. Regardless, they did a great job over Easter weekend, and that's why they've risen a couple of places in our power rankings. Well, Luton Town have been big fallers on this show over the last few weeks, but not anymore because they are grinding. At least they were over the Easter weekend. A 1-0 win against playoff challengers Forest, and another 1-0 win away at Cardiff. Harry Cornick leaping like a salmon. He might dress like Jack Grealish, but I've never seen Grealish head one home like that, that's for sure. Everything's conspiring against Luton at the moment, particularly in terms of injuries. In that game, they had to take three players off injured in the first hour of the game, and that's on top of a pretty large injury list. There's a suggestion that Nathan Jones almost thrives in these positions where the world seems against them. There's a strength that Luton seem to have when they're up against it. And that's something to look out for because they've strengthened their playoff spot. They look almost a shoe in now to be playing extra games in May, at playoff semi-finals at the very least. We know at their best, they are so difficult to play against with that press, with their physicality. They can play as well and they defend like beavers, as Chris Kamara uh, once said. They're in such a strong spot. And I guess they'll be hoping for players to come back in time for the playoffs. But just be aware that even when they're missing players, Luton are just fine. Thank you very much. Next up in our power ranking, Sunderland, who, well, they had a pretty good Easter weekend on paper, picking up a win, a late winner it was on Good Friday, and then drawing at Plymouth Argyle, a nil-all draw against a team in and around them. It was a must-not-lose game, and both teams felt that, and it played out as such. Now, Sunderland are technically just outside the playoffs, clearly with that game in hand and the same points tally as Wiccan. They are in a strong spot. And the reason why I suspect Sunderland might be higher in these rankings next time we do a video is that this weekend they've got a home game against Cambridge at the Stadium of Light. And as I mentioned earlier, six of the top eight in League One, all of the teams around them are trying to take points off each other. So I'm predicting Sunderland a couple of places higher next week. Uh, as for Easter weekend, a good performance, good results. The Sunderland story hasn't been written yet this season, that's for sure. Next up, it's Sheffield United. I suppose it's a positive that they're still part of the power rankings altogether, but they're clinging on, aren't they? And it was a terrible weekend for them. Losing at home to Reading, drawing against Bristol City in both games against teams down towards the bottom of the table. Blades had all the territory, all the possession. They were getting into the box at will, but they got no strikers fit and available. And it showed they just couldn't get the goals in. And then they got sucker punched 
Reading, it was a set play that won then the game. And Bristol City did them on the counter-attack. It was a really poor weekend for Sheffield United. And when you look, when you zoom out, you look at the league table, you have to say it was hugely damaging for them. On the one hand, because the teams above them got further away from them. But also, look at Millwall. That's the big one to watch out for in the championship. Keep an eye out for the for the next Power Rankings video because there's every chance that this weekend Millwall could punch their way above Sheffield United. Based on the way the two teams are playing, you wouldn't be surprised. The Blades are just looking blunt at the moment. Paul Heckingbottom has to find something, some inspiration from somewhere to make sure they do extend their season into the playoffs. We've got a new member in League Two. And it is Sutton United. And it gives me great pleasure to say this because Sutton United, quite frankly, are one of the best stories in the whole of English football at the moment. They won the National League last season, despite not being a professional club at that time, in a league that's like 75% professional clubs right now, with some really, really big, big clubs with big history. Sutton didn't care about that. They brushed them all aside. They won promotion to League Two for the first time in their history. They went professional. And guess what? They're in the playoff places. They probably had the best Easter weekend of any team of all the 72. And that's because heading into it, Sutton United are in 10th place. They had fixtures against Mansfield, who were fourth, and Newport County, who were seventh. And they beat them both 3-2 against, against Mansfield in a ding-dong. 1-0 back at home against Newport County. Yes, that was a bit of a smash and grab. The goal from a pen, some poor finishing from Newport County. It doesn't really matter at this stage of the season. We're focused on results much more than we would be maybe focused more on performances in the first part of the campaign. Sutton are now in a strong position with a game in hand, with four fixtures left, all four of them against teams beneath them in the table and not even any of them in any sort of promotion contention either. All four of these teams that Sutton have to play are outside of the top 10 altogether. Sutton United, frankly, are a fairy tale right now. And I think, I think there could be another few chapters left to be written. So in last spot, in 19th on the Liga 72 promotion power rankings, it's Tranmere Rovers. And if, if we're honest, I've spoken to James about this, they're probably the team that are causing us the most grief at the moment. We can't make head nor tail of Tramir Rovers at the moment. They seem to lurch between magnificent performances and wins and a ton of confidence. But way more often than that recently, it's been real doom and gloom, just limp, insipid performances, particularly away from home. So the win against Exeter City on Easter Monday, let's talk about that. A 2-0 win at home at Prenton Park, which is a fortress. It's the fortress in League Two. They got the best home record in the whole division. They did the business against Exeter. They kept their sheets clean and they scored two good goals. And Callum McManaman with a fabulous performance. It seems pretty crazy, doesn't it, that Tramia have a player playing for them in League Two who was man of the match in an FA Cup final, what, only a a handful of years ago, McManaman could have a big say in the running. I don't really want to say any more about Tramir because I can't make a fist of it at the moment. I don't know what to expect. The next time we do this video, they might have dropped off altogether. They might have strengthened their position. Maybe, maybe Tramir fan Matthew can make some more sense of it. Tramir's 2 0 win against Exeter came out of the blue. We were abject on Good Friday at Valley Parade despite drawing 1 1 against Bradford, second best against 11 men and 10 men for much of the game. However, the win over Exeter, hope springs eternal. They say the hope that kills you, but hopefully not. As we go away to Stevenage next Saturday, we need to keep winning. However, we the away form has been so bad that um, fans will be going there and hope more than expectation. We also have to go to Leighton Orient on the final game of the season. We do have a home match against Oldham, who could be down by the time we play them in that penultimate match. The form at Prenton Park has been rock steady for virtually the whole season, but it's that away form and um, all roads now lead to Stevenage to see if we can finally uh, string together those wins that we need to, to scramble into the playoffs and have a, a bonus shot at getting promoted this season. Tramir fans, get into that comment section right now because we need a hand here. Does hope spring eternal? Or is the hope killing you right now? What do you expect from your team from now until the end of the season? Because I'm scuppered, to be quite honest with you, when it comes to the Super White Army. Regardless, it was a brilliant weekend, you have to say, particularly that win against Exeter. And you are the 19th team on this week's LO72 Promotion Power Rankings.
Well, initially doing this video, I was nervous just to fill in for the mighty James Allcott. And now at the end of it, I'm nervous about two things. I'm nervous about the end of the season in the EFL, particularly this weekend, where some of the fixtures are absolutely unbelievable on a knife edge, particularly in League One. So make sure you stay locked to the EFL this coming weekend. I'm also nervous about your thoughts on our power rankings. There might be a few noses out of joint, but these are the 19 teams that we think deserve to be in this week's promotion power rankings. There's not many games to go. Let us know in the comments section what you think. Who have we overlooked? Who have we underestimated? Who have we got too high? We want to hear from you in the comments section. If you've enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could give us a like, if you could subscribe to the channel. We've got some brilliant stuff coming up between now and the end of the season. And we want you here with us celebrating the best leagues in the world, the EFL. Cheers for watching.